Good afternoon. I'm Neil, CEO here at Powerwall. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, for us to tell you what we're up to here in the in the northeast. Um, I think Budika has nicely teed up um, what we're trying to achieve here at Powerwall. Um, we have developed uh, here in the northeast, uh, invented, developed, proven, and we're now scaling a, a completely unique way to generate solar power and actually to do many other things, but I'm really gonna focus on the solar technology today. And what we've developed is a new way to deploy some of these exciting new materials that are being developed, both here in the Northeast and, and across, the, across the globe, uh, developing a potentially disruptive solar technology. Um, the Northeast has a, has a, rich, a rich history in, in developing renewable technologies. I mean, anyone who's been to Cragside, We'll know that the first house powered by hydropower was up here in the northeast. So, you know, we think it's fitting that this type of new technology is developed here. So a little bit of background, and you will have heard some of this in previous uh, conversations, and actually Budik has um, really set out some of the points, is the demand for renewables is increasing. I mean, Bloomberg recently estimated that it's a four trillion market for solar PV uh, across the, the next 10 to 20 years. Governments, companies, and many others are setting net zero targets. The UK was leading in that respect. Um, and silicon PV, is, as Budika said, is the market leader and is, has gained significant traction. Um, however, we, we absolutely agree with Budika that there are some problems with silicon. It's heavy. It's rigid. It's pretty complex to produce. Um, it's, 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 it has some severe limitations for many applications. There are a number of lightweight PV solutions on the market, but they, they're traditionally very expensive. So therefore they're, they're somewhat niche. So we spotted an opportunity in the market to develop something that is lightweight, flexible, low cost um, to really open up new markets. So this is a small video, hopefully you can see playing, which is where we envisage our solar film being uh, deployed. So commercial buildings and any type of building environment um, transport, so powering trucks, powering um, buses, um, off-grid applications such as pumping water, agricultural uses, um, and then you get into off-power scenarios, whether that be military, whether that be domestic, uh, whether that be recreational, all the way through to powering IoT devices that are used in Industry 4.0. So we, we see a really incredible amount of unmet demand for our unique solar film that we're generating and there's a few on this on this slide here and I'll, I'll just quickly touch on some of the numbers because because they become very large very quickly so if you look at roofing um silicon panels are heavy they're around about 12 kilograms per meter squared our solar film is around about 300 grams per meter squared so those those rooftops that are non-load bearing um not particularly stable are open to the, the deployment of a energy generation uh, technology such as our solar film. So in the UK alone, there's esti estimated to be something like 2 billion square meters of available roof space. Um, and if you only attract a small potential proportion of that, you're talking that it has the potential to generate 30 to 40 gigawatts of energy and given the numbers that, that Douglas uh, talked about earlier, that shows you the size of the prize. But then you take this outside of the UK and you go to countries such as India, you go to parts of Africa um, where roof structures are not um, uh, particularly brilliant in all situations, then the, the opportunity is, is significantly larger. Agricultural fabrics. So this is where you've got unusual structures and, and forms. So we've got a, our solar film is 0.3 of a millimeter thick. So it means it can curve around any surface virtually. So if you take a good example is the, the Millennium Dome. Every time I'm in London, I look at it and say, yeah, that's that's where our solar film should be. And if you covered the, the Millennium do Dome in, in our PV, you know, you, you could generate sort of nine or 10 megawatts and you could power 2000 homes. So there's a real opportunity in, in these architectural fabrics and they're all over the world. There's billions of square meters of these again. Take agriculture. Now, this is a very, very interesting sector. So if you take somewhere like India, um, we're doing quite a bit of development work with some partners over in India and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in shortly. 
There are something like 30 million pumps pumping water in India. It uses about 20% of all of the energy of, of India is used in agriculture. Now, a lot of these pumps are diesel. They're nasty, they're polluting, uh, they're expensive to run and maintain. So if we replace um, a million of those water pumps with our unique solar film to, uh, to be able to power the, the pumping of water, that would basically turn approximately four gigawatts of energy from, from diesel generation into clean green tech. Um, greenhouses and polytunnels, um, the opportunity to integrate our technology, which is very lightweight and, and, and low cost into these structures. Again, there are there's something like 30, 35 billion meters squared of greenhouses across the world, um, which could benefit from energy generation for um, the irrigation and lighting that's used within those. And then you look at commercial transport. Um, now, solar power is, is not probably going to be strong enough to be able to power EVs or electric um, industrial vehicles, trucks. But what it can do is be used to extend range, to power some of the electronics. So again, every lorry I pass on the motorway, I see is a missed opportunity where we can put our solar film and, and it is an opportunity for the future where we can put our solar film. So there are, this is just a small snapshot of where we're looking to deploy our, 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 our unique solar film. Let me talk a little bit about this. I'm not gonna get into the detail too much. So what we've got here is a unique way to deploy materials. So we, we etch nano um, uh, structures into a, a polymer substrate. Um, so instead of the typical solar PV design that the Boudicca was, was looking at, where you've got a top contact, a bottom contact, and active materials in the middle, we flipped it on its side to form these microstructures, um, which are produced in the same way that you would make a hologram. So you look at the Visa Dove, you look at the MasterCard symbol, we're using that same processes, but what we're doing here is creating the structure to create solar cells. Um, we then deposit various electrodes on the sides of those uh, microstructures and we deposit the absorber. So at the moment, we're using perovskites, which again, Budika mentioned in, in, in his slides. It's, a, it's an emerging material, high efficiency, low cost and printable. But actually, the benefit of our platform is that as new materials come along, um, and we've done some work previously with Douglas on, on CZTS and others, as they come along, we can deploy them into our microstructures in a very, very cost effective way. And then we sandwich them into a into a, into a sandwich that protects protects the the, the film from uh, defects and um, environmental factors. So it's a simple process. It's a scalable process. So where we are as Parole, you know, as a, as a northeast generated business, um, we've gone through the, the the proof of concept and we've proven that our technology uh, technology works. And we've just secured just under six million of funding. And what we're doing with that was we're creating a first of a kind solar plant here in the Northeast. Uh, it's probably going to be in County Durham. Or, um, and that is going to basically show that this solar film, our solar film can be made using roll to roll um, techniques. And it's a very, very important um, uh, proof point for our technology uh, and for the partners that we're working with. We've just signed a contract with a large Japanese utility. And just yesterday, actually signed a, a contract with a, a, an Indian uh, public company to look at um, manufacturing our solar film once demonstrated in those territories. So this is this is really exciting part of our company's journey. Um, it will be a, a first in its use, and it's an interesting point because the new factory we haven't quite signed off exactly where it's going to be, but we're very close to, is likely to be on these on the previous um, Hawthorne Cork Works which uh, in Merton, which is, you know, I think a great story of, a, um, you know, a, a heritage uh, energy source from the Northeast now turning into a new energy generation uh, potential for the Northeast, the parallel solar film. So we're, we're really excited about that. And then across the end of this year, we'll be producing our first range of solar film and we'll be uh, having a number of demonstration sites across the Northeast and the UK and worldwide. And then we're looking to exploit the technology globally. So, so this is a really exciting point of our of our of our commercial journey. Um, so, a little bit about differences, and this will make some sense given what um, um, Bidik has just been talking about. Is silicon PV is the dominant technology? Ninety five percent of all the solar panels in the world are, are are silicon, and they're made in China or the Far East. Our mission is to get our solar film made close to market. 
UK, yes, Europe, US, China, uh, India, Japan, Africa, wherever those markets are, our solar foam can be ma manufactured, creating local employment and local green jobs. So it's a completely unique solution. It is unlike anything else that's been seen on, on, on the marketplace. Um, our, our technology eliminates multiple process steps that are needed by others, which drives the cost of production significantly um, down. Um, we use process steps that are used in holographics and food packaging type processes, which again helps us have a low cost of adoption and low cost of scale. It's lightweight and flexible, as I talked about before, extremely lightweight. Importantly, the, the built-in carbon and um, the, compared to a silicon module, we have around about 20 times less carbon built into our solar film when it's made compared to the traditional silicon panels that are on uh, rooftops here in the UK, which means that the energy carbon payback uh, period is extremely short, something around about 30 to 40 days to, to get the carbon payback of, of what's built into our solar film. Interestingly, the unique design of what we've got is, and again, if anyone's got solar panels, they'll realize this is if you get partial shading of silicon modules, they don't particularly like it. Um, and it can, in fact, it impact the modules pretty significantly. Our unique design uh, means that we've got millions of microstructures um, all acting as individual solar cells, which means that if we get a defect, um, whether that be you know bird debris, whether that actually be a hole, whether that be damage, then we only lose the area of the solar cell, the solar film that is um, has been damaged. We don't lose the entire um, string or module, which can happen in, in silicon BV. So very, very, even though it's thin, it's extremely robust. And importantly, and probably the most important is it's very low cost to scale. So this is a technology that we see is gonna be mass produced in the UK and outside of the UK. And the cost of scaling it is around about the 10th of that of silicon PV. So this is, you know, the, the economics are, are, are super exciting and levelized cost of energy, again, was mentioned in the previous presentation. So our, our modeling and others that have done it based on our technology shows that the, the, the cost of electricity produced, the, the levelized cost of energy, is around about 50% of that compared to traditional silicon panels, because it's not just a, a module that you need, you need inverters, you need the infrastructure to, to, um, to, to, uh, to connect through to whatever circuitry that you're using. So the, the purpose here was really just to give you an insight of what we're doing um, at Parole. A couple of extra things I would say before I wrap up and, and, and hand back to, to Douglas is that um, the Northeast has a, a, has a a good level of innovation in renewables. So there's a number of companies that are working on a whole range of renewables across the, the Northeast. I don't think we actually probably blow our own trumpet enough. And I think that's something I would encourage us all to do. Um, from a parallel perspective, we've worked with Durham, we've worked with Northumbria, um, uh, we've done some previous work with CPI. So, you know, the, there is an infrastructure there to develop new technologies. Now, we are working with many other partners as well. But I think, um, there is a lot of power and knowledge in materials and in, and in renewables here in the Northeast. And I think we need to harness that to drive this forward. Here at Parallel, we're looking to bring this, this new solar film um, technology to market. And there's a lot of interest in what we're doing, both locally, nationally, and internationally. So hopefully this will be a success story for the Northeast in terms of a new way to, to generate solar power. And um, I look forward to taking any questions that anybody's got and I will hand back to Douglas uh, for the next speaker. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Neil. That's a fascinating presentation. I was just reflecting that I first met you and colleagues from Power Roll about four years ago. So it's quite remarkable, you know, how far you've progressed in this time. And a very important fact, I think, to highlight for me is the scalability of this kind of technology that, you know, it is entirely realistic to plan for manufacturing of PV of this type of technology in the UK and in, uh, indeed other countries. So I think that's yeah. a really exciting development. So thank you for sharing that with us.